chapter number 1. I'm grateful that you are, are here this morning. Strain of uh, colds or flu going around that's pretty uh, significant, I guess, pretty powerful. Those that have come down with it have really had problems. So uh, be in prayer for one another. The Gospel of John, chapter 1, and I want to read the verse 1 down to verse number 16. The Gospel of John. If you're able to, let's stand together just to honor God. Please, you, you don't ever stand for me. But we, we stand, we get this from the book of Nehemiah. They began to read the word of God and the people stood. All right? In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. There was a man sent from God, whose name was John. The same came for a witness, to bear witness of the light, that all men through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light, which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. He was in the world. The world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came into his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. John bare witness of him, and cried, saying, This was he of whom I spake, he that cometh after me is preferred before me, for he was before me. And of his fullness have all we received, and grace for grace. Mm -hmm. Our Father, thank you for the Word of God and its comprehensiveness. Thank you for its instructions. Thank you for its truthfulness. Thank you that you have preserved it and preserved its inspiration down through all these years. And so that it is still reliable, still very relevant, and very real for our lives today. Please help us today, I pray in Christ's name. Amen. Looking with me, please, in uh, verse 11. He came into his own, his own received him not. Christ was of the Jews. The Jews rejected him for the most part. But some of them received him. Verse 12, but as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. They were not the sons of God, but in receiving Christ, he gave them power to become his sons. Yeah. It's a miracle. Yeah. So we can't explain how that works, but it's a miracle. Remind you, we are saved by faith and by grace. It tells us here in verse number 13, those that received him were born. And now notice what it says. Not of blood. Dr. Bob Lasilius said once, or he maybe said it more than once, but I heard it the one time, God has no grandchildren. I, I'm, I'm not a Christian because my mother was. I don't believe the Bible because my dad did. Amen. They were born not of blood, nor of 
the will of the flesh. Then it says, nor the will of man. Teaching theology in the years that I did, I heard often discussions and questions about the free will of man. And I believe in the free will of man. The free will of man is what made man a sinner. That's right. The free will of man is what fouled everything up. Amen. In Genesis chapter 3, this verse right here says, no man was born because, again, because of his free will. In other words, if you have received the Lord, if I have received the Lord, I cannot stand back and say, Wee, look what I did. That's right. All right. Read it again. <clears throat> Which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. What happens when a man receives the Lord? Look at verse 16. And of his fullness have we all received, and grace for grace. I have several thoughts to share with you. We'll go as far as we can this morning. But there are some absolutes that take place when a man receives the Lord. Over the, now, I've heard people say, you know, I accepted the Lord. I, I find more in the Bible about God accepting us than I do us accepting God. Amen. We need to understand that, all right? But, stay with me now. This word received has to do with the idea of accepting it. It's speaking of the salvation experience, if you please. And so, if you are saved, you received something from God. Amen. You accepted it, if it is yours. Amen. And so, we have that. And so, I want to share with you some things that are absolutes. This is true. Because I've met people that have told, oh yeah, preacher, I've accepted the Lord. I've accepted the Lord. They had the language, behavior, and morals of perverts. But yet they tell me they've accepted the Lord. You say, are you saying anybody, everybody that cusses and... No, I'm not saying that. Paul said, oh, wretched man that I am. We, I'm, and, and we're going to see here that we still sin. I'm not preaching. Some preach what's called the eradication of the old nature. That a person that has accepted the Lord never sins anymore. That's crazy. If we say that we have no sin, we lie and do not the truth. 1 John chapter 1 tells us. All right? I assure you, there's no flag that I can wave in the presence of God and say, well, I haven't done that. Amen. All right? We are sinners at our, at our best. But what has happened? We're gonna, if we're going to come back to John chapter 1, just turn the page over. I want to start in John chapter 3. When a man really receives the Lord, there are some things that happen in every case. Every person that accepts the Lord, this has taken place. Dead sinners are born again. John chapter 3, verse 3, Jesus is speaking. Now let's remember, he is the authority. In our Sunday school class, we heard this morning from Brother Carlos in Acts chapter 4 and verse number 12. There's none of the name given among men under heaven whereby you must be saved. Amen. Jesus Christ is the authority. Amen. All right? And he says in John chapter 3, verse 3, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Verse 7, marvel not that I said unto thee, you must be born again. It does not say you must birth yourselves. John chapter 3 is where we have primarily all the Bible teaching about the new birth. This is where we have all the Bible information. Notice, please, there are no instructions. Nah. Because you are born. You don't birth yourself. That's right. You must be born again. 
was at the hospital this week to visit uh, Mrs. Sonny and her new baby. He didn't just decide, I reckon I'll be born today. God in his working brought him into the world. Amen. And that's the way we're born. God likens it to spiritual birth to a physical birth. He, he says we're born of the water of the spirit. Uh, we didn't just come into this world on our own. God brought us. Amen. Amen. And as childbirth is a, is a miracle, so is the new birth. What happens when a man receives the Lord? Dead sinners are born again. Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 1. Now we're studying the book of Ephesians on Wednesday night. I would strongly encourage you to come because it's a tremendously rich study. Nice. And, and we're, we're having a good time studying it. I am anyway. Nice. Like one fellow said, if you don't enjoy your own preaching, how do you expect anybody else to? <laughs> and so uh, I'm, having a, a, I'm enjoying preparing the lessons and delivering them. So I, I hope you would come. But Ephesians chapter 2 verse 1 tells us we're dead in trespasses and sins. Now, now folks, you can trust me on this or I'll provide the books. But that word dead means dead. It doesn't mean real sick. It doesn't mean comatose. It doesn't mean knocked out. It means dead, lifeless. Romans uh, 5 tells us when we were without strength. In due time, Christ died for the ungodly. We were dead. When a man accepts the Lord, he's born again. By the Spirit of God, he's given life from above. Galatians chapter 2 says, I am Paul speaking, same writer, I mean, that wrote Romans and Galatians and Ephesians. He's speaking of this. He said, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. Romans chapter 8, in the study of adoption, we read that God put the spirit of his son into our hearts, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. You see, folks, what happens when a man receives the Lord? Well, dead sinners are born again. Man. The Bible calls it, and theologically it's called regeneration. We were dead. We are regenerated. We were given life. Lazarus. Why do we have distorted Lazarus in the Bible? What's so significant about that? Well, it tells us, just like God called Lazarus from the <coughs> physical death, he called us out of darkness, the Bible says. He called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. We were born again, the Bible tells us, by the word of God. Look at John chapter 1, verse 16. And of his fullness have all we received and grace for grace. I'm, now the purpose of the message this morning, the, the goal or the focus is, is uh, it's, I have several. One is uh, assurance. This has happened. Yeah. This has taken place if you have received the Lord. On the other hand, in contrast, I want to do some, like one preacher said, I want to kill some false gods. Amen. Because I've met people all over the world, oh yes, I've accepted the Lord, I've accepted the Lord. I said, wait a minute, something different from what happened to you and what happened to me. If you've accepted the Lord, you receive the fullness of Christ. Christ is living in your heart. I ask you, what's going on? Is Christ in you? Colossians tells us the hope of glory. Look with me in John 14, please, verse 23. I don't necessarily have to rush through this. If we don't finish it, we can... Like one preacher said, this sermon's like a baloney. I can cut it off anywhere I need to. <laughs> I hope it's not baloney. I hope it makes sense. Now, of course, Brother Art, Brother Art dying his death, had a whole list of those little sayings. 
He talked about the Longhorn Sermon, two points and a lot of bull in between. <laughs> I hope that's certainly not the case. Verse 23 of John 14, Jesus answered and said unto him, If a man love me, he will keep my words, and my Father will love him, and we will come unto him and make our abode with him. If you have accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, as it is said, God has come in Amen. to your heart and He lives there. Amen. I ask you again, what's going on? Who's living? Who's doing the living in your life? We read in, look with me in 1 Corinthians chapter 2. You see, we've received spiritual life. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, please. Beginning in verse number 9. But as it is written, I have not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. But God hath revealed them unto us by his Spirit. For the Spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. Now that word revealed in verse 10 means uncovered. All right? For what, verse 11, for what man knoweth the things of man, save the spirit of man which is in him? Even so, the things of God knoweth no man but the spirit of God. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. I've had people say to me along the way, well, I, 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 just, I just can't understand the Bible. I just can't understand the Bible. <coughs> that, to me, is honest, scary, and sobering. All right? None of us completely understand the Bible. <laughs> completely. But if you have received Christ, you've got the Holy Spirit inside your heart doing some teaching. Amen. And you are learning and being educated along the way. If the Holy Spirit is not doing any teaching, He may not be there. Amen. Romans chapter 8 says, If any man have not the Spirit of God, he is none of his. You say, Preacher, this is kind of serious. Amen. Yeah, it really is. And I'll tell you why. I, when I was pastoring in Pennsylvania, had a lady ask me one time, Why does it have to be so serious? And here's why. Because of Matthew chapter 7. And that verse that says, many will say unto me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? Thy name cast out devils. Thy name done many wonderful works. Then he says, depart from me, ye that work iniquity. I never knew you. I don't want to have very many people in that crowd. Amen. So it's serious. That's right. I'm going to tell you the truth. I'm going to help you to understand it the best that I can. And there it is. You see so it says here, we have received. God put the spirit of his son into our hearts, whereby enabling us to cry, Abba, Father. And John 14 tells us that that Holy Spirit that we have received is teaching. So I don't understand all of it, but I've learned a lot. Man. I don't know all of it, but I know a bunch. Forty years I've been reading and studying in the Spirit of God teaching. So there's something going on if you really receive the Lord. Amen. All right. Quick, verse 13 now. Which things we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. Verse 14. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, their foolishness on him, neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. Spiritually discerned means their judgment is all fouled up towards spiritual things. That's what that word discerned means. Have you ever made a decision in life and used poor judgment? Wow. Well, <laughs> 
haven't we all? This is not confession time because I'm sure not going to tell you all mine. All right? But we, over the years, we've used some poor judgment. Amen. All right? Uh, said I wasn't going to tell you all, but I'll tell you one. I got stopped for speeding in the Greek metropolis of Madisonville one time when I was still a student at the Arlington Baptist College living in the dorm. In all of my genius, I thought, the Madison, Madisonville Police Force is not going to come all the way to Arlington to enforce a speeding violation. <laughs> so I didn't do anything about it at all. You know what? They came to Arlington. <laughs> <laughs> right there in the, in the highly pious dormitories of the Arlington Baptist College, I went to check my mail, and there were two warrants for my arrest. <laughs> and the ladies that worked in the college office had to put those warrants in my mailbox. So I got up and ran down to the magistrate, walked into his office, and I put those on his desk, and I said, you've been looking for me. He said, yeah, we have, and you're hard to find. I said, not anymore. <laughs> and I told him the whole truth, that I just thought they'd never come after me. And he looked at me like, nobody is really that stupid. <laughs> but I said, now, here's what I want to do. I'm going to pay you half of this right now, and I'll pay you the rest of the <coughs> next Friday. And he let me go. Truth <coughs> Poor judgment. Man being spiritually discerned, his judgment is all fouled up. He can't make the right decisions about the things of God. The Bible said he can't. He can't. Right. So we get to arguing about all of this free will stuff. The Bible said he can't. Yeah. He can't. You see. So we see the wonderful thing when God imparts it to us. And he enables us to receive it, all right? But he that is spiritual judgeth all things, yet himself is judge of no man. For who, can, for who hath known the mind of the Lord, that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. Let me tell you something, folks. If you have received the Lord as your personal Savior, whatever terminology you want to use, if it's real, if it's genuine, you've got spiritual life. Dead sinners are born again by the Spirit of God. Jesus Christ really lives in their heart. In our text, John chapter 1, what happens when a person genuinely receives the Lord as their personal Savior? They become the sons of God. We read in John chapter 1, He came to His own, His own received Him not. But as many as received Him, to them gave He power to become the sons of God. Amen. Now, we were not. Ephesians chapter 2, I was using a while ago, it tells us we were children of wrath. By nature, children of wrath. We were not the children of grace, we were the children of wrath. John 3, 36, that I use so often. He that believeth on the Son of the everlasting life. He that believeth not shall not see life, but the wrath of God abides on him. You see? And I know this is different from so much that we hear, but I believe it's grossly dishonest to tell a man, smile, God loves you, if really and truly, he's under the wrath of God. Right. I mean, if he dies, he's not going to die in the love of God. He's going to die in the wrath of God. He's not going to spend eternity in the love of God. He's going to spend eternity in the wrath of God. So what business do I have telling him, smile, God loves you? When really, the, the truth of the matter is, bow before God. Because he's angry. He's angry with the wicked every day, the Bible tells us. So, as I've read and studied, some ask, why haven't we heard this? And my question is, I don't know. But I've had preachers tell me, and I mean no arrogance by this, but I've had preachers tell me, I'm not going to preach that. 
I've never, in 40 years, I've never drawn a crowd. But I want you to understand this. I've told people the truth. Amen. Paul said in Acts, I'm clean of the blood of all men. You see, you may die and go to hell. But if you do, it's not going to be because I sugar-coated things and, and gave you a cookie when I needed to be telling you something a little more direct. I hope you can understand that. I don't want to make people Amen. mad. I don't want to hurt people's feelings. And I certainly can't scare anybody. That I preached and had that happen. And I, I had a man come and we baptized him. And uh, directly he quit coming. And I said, what, what's happening? What's going on? And he said, oh, preacher, you just scared the hell out of me. That's what the man said to me. And I said, no, I didn't either, evidently. Man. I don't mean any crudeness or grossness there. If you took that as being crude, I apologize. It's just what the man said to me. I said, no, I didn't scare him. I can't scare anybody into heaven. I can't make people come. I can't make people give. I can't make people believe. I can't. All of these things that I want to. You see. And you know, the Bible says, go out in highways and byways and compel them to come in. And I'd like to drag them in with my truck. The problem is, some of them got bigger trucks than I do. You see. We trust Charles Spurgeon, all his, his pulpit was elevated. He would tell himself, going up to the pulpit, he said, I believe in the Holy Ghost. I believe in the Holy Ghost. You see, the Holy Spirit has to do this. What happens when a man receives the Lord? Dead sinners are born again by the Spirit of God. Secondly, what happens when a man receives the Lord? They become the sons of God. All this happens at the same time. Instantaneous. All right? Now, in salvation, we are saved. We are being saved. The process of sanctification. We shall be saved. One of these days, we'll be glorified. We'll talk about that in tonight's message. But I want you to understand something. Redemption, justification, reconciliation, uh, all, all of that. Remission of sins, all of that takes place the instant God saves you by his grace. All right? And, it, and it's, it's, it's all of that is eternal. And you, can you see the eternal security in all of this? You see, in order for you or me or anyone else to lose their salvation, all of this that man receives from God has to be taken away by God. As if God in all of his majesty and sovereignty is going to say, give that back. The gifts and columns of God without Amen. Bless his holy name. He's given it to me. He's not coming back after it. I've shared this with you before, but I collect pocket knives. As Brother Kelly did, he really got me started in it more. But uh, I gave his son, Terry, who lives up in Oklahoma, a pearl handle pocket knife made by Buck. Beautiful knife. Because I just thought, well, I'll just go down and buy me another one. I gave him one and then Buck quit making them. <laughs> I never wanted to make a trip to Oklahoma so bad in my life. <laughs> and get that knife back. Look here, man. Poor judgment. Give it back. I'll give you a different one. It doesn't work that way. You just could. God's love is eternal. Gifts and callings of God are without repentance. God is not going to crawfish out of his gifts. We become the sons of God. I love 1 John 3 verse 1. Behold what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. All right? Uh, August 30th, 1953, I was born in Houston, and my dad called me, Charles Robert 
Osborne. That's just what they put on the gift certificate. Aren't you glad you came to church this morning? <laughs> you're all about me. If you stay with me, you're going to understand this. When we were saved by the grace of God, God called us his sons. I can tell you all about Ari and Osborne. Tell you all the stories about my dad. I can't make you his son. I can tell you the stories about Jesus Christ. God can put the spirit of the Holy Ghost in your heart. And God can in a miracle make you his son. Amen. We were the children of wrath. John 8, 44, we were of our father the devil. God called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. And God, because in his love, behold what manner of love the father hath bestowed upon us. We should be called the sons of God. Amen. Amen. Now, God does that calling. All right? I can't undo that call. I have things with my sons and with my wife that I just can't live down. Uh, I don't know why. I can't do anything about the, the loudness, the physical stature. I, I just born. That's what I had. But my older son calls me Sasquatch. <laughs> Christopher will call me sometimes. He'll say, Sasquatch delivery service running. He needs me to haul some air conditioning. And I get kind of Sasquatchy very often. All right. Joel, in turn, calls me Mighty Joe. You've seen the program with the giant gorilla. I get a little apish at times, I guess. Especially when things don't cooperate. You've seen it. And then, in all of her compassion, Dinah just says, you're a freak show. <laughs> she said, you're just a freak show. It's a wonder I haven't joined the Army permanently somewhere, or the Marines or something. But anyway, those are names that they've called, but they really don't mean anything. Do they? They may fit. <laughs> they may be exact. But they really don't have any meaning. But to be called by the creator of the universe, motivated by his love, to be called his son, now that means something. Amen. And that calling is divine. Nobody's cutting up with me. Nobody's trying to insult me. Nobody's trying to show me where I fit in the animal kingdom. <laughs> This is divine. God has called me his son. So really, what significant does any insulting thing someone would say to me have? You say to me, I learned, I, this came to mind here a while back. If somebody's saying bad things about me, they're really not telling all the story. <laughs> 